if you've never done a killer sudoku before a good place to find one is killer sudoku online and look at the ones for monday in their archive the reason for this is that all the easier ones are put in on mondays so the thing about a killer sudoku is that you're not given any of the numbers at all unlike an ordinary sudoku but what you are given in the top left hand corner of the cage is the total of the numbers in that cage. So for example, when you've got a cage that's got a little three in the top left-hand corner, and you know that there are gonna be two numbers in there, you know that you've got to have a one and a two. So you don't actually know which way around they'd be to start with. And what I would do is just write a one and a two like that to show that we know that one and two belong in there, but we're not sure which way around they go. So for example, in the bottom row in this one, we know down here we must have a one and a two like that. So later on, we'll be able to see which way around they go. The other really important thing is that in any cage, you cannot have a number repeated. Other than that, the rules are all the same as your usual Sudoku so that you've got the numbers from one to nine appearing in each row with no repetitions and the same thing in each column and of course in each three by three square that's got a big bold line around it. So let's just write down the important total, the total of the numbers from one to nine. So this is really important knowing that the sum of any row or column or square is going to be 45. So if you look at the top row in this one, you can see that the cages containing eight and seven and 14 are only contained in that top row. But the one containing 24 has one square that kind of drops down into the second row. So that's really useful when there's just one square dropped out, that will mean we'll be able to find that value. So let's see how this works. So if we add together eight, seven, 14 and 24, we get 53. And we know that that must equal 45 because that's the sum of the all the numbers in the top row, all the numbers from one to nine, plus that one number in the second row, in the middle of the second row. So we know that that number in the middle of the second row must be 53 minus 45, so it must be eight. So that number goes in there. And in this particular puzzle, we can see a similar sort of thing happens right at the bottom. So if you look at the bottom row, 23 and eight are only on the bottom line and 16 has one cell that's in the line above. So we can work out 20 plus three plus eight and then add on the 16 and that's 47. And we know that the bottom row adds up to 45. So if we subtract that, we get two. So that's giving us this number here. So that's using the sum of the numbers in, the, in two of the rows in this puzzle. And we can do the same sort of thing for a couple of the squares. The top right hand corner is the first one I'm going to look at. You can see that there we've got 14, 10, and 13 all contained in that top right hand corner and 12 has got just one square outside. So if we add that lot together we get 49. So we can see that the square outside must be 4. And the other one that behaves in a similar kind of way is at the bottom left hand corner. So there we've got 20 four and 10 all inside that square. 15 has got one number outside. So we add those numbers together and we get 49 again. So that we can see that if we subtract the total of the numbers in the square, that we're going to get four. Okay, so that's given us four numbers just by using that fact that the numbers from one to nine add up to 45. Okay, so the next thing I would look at is, well, we've already seen that three can only be one and two. So let's look at the next number up. Four can only be one plus three. 
because we can never have two of the same numbers next to each other or in the same cage. So we've got a couple of fours, haven't we? So we've got one there. So those two must be one and three and another one here. The next thing actually I'm going to look at is the eight in the bottom right hand corner. So you may think that's strange to suddenly jump up to eight when we've got a seven elsewhere, but there's a reason for it. So let's have a look. So eight could be one and seven or two and six or three and five. So that looks as if it's going to be quite difficult to work out what numbers could be there. But remember that looking along in that row, we've already found that three's got to be one and two. So that eliminates the possibility in this case that eight could be one and seven or two and six. So in fact, it must be three and five. So that gives us three and five in there. So you can see that at the moment, what I'm doing is writing in things that have got to be so. So there's no point me looking at the seven in the top row at the moment, or the eight, because there's too many possibilities. But can you see that if we have a seven with three numbers that add to seven, there's only one way that we can do that. So it must be one plus two plus four. It can't be two plus two plus three, because that would have a repeating two, and that's not allowed. Now, we're looking at the fourth row from the bottom, and we know that's already got a one in it, so therefore the one for that seven must be down here, and the two and the four must be in the row above. So that now means, now that we've put that one in, we can go down to our three and know where the one and the two have got to be. So let's just rub out the one and the two that we've written in. And now we can write in the one on that side and the two on the other side. And that tells us that the two for the seven must be on the right hand side, mustn't it? So we can write in the two and the four. And now we've got two twos over there. We know that one of these has got to be a two. And in fact, for the middle, we know that there's got to be a four here or here. So there's two possible places for that, just using the ordinary rules of Sudoku. And looking at the other seven, where there's three numbers that add up to seven, well, we know that the four must be down here because we've already got a four in the second row. So we must have a one and a two here. So we can't have a two in across the other side with the two. And in fact, we can't have a two in the other position for that 10 because we know we can't have an eight in the second row there. So that tells us where the two is. The two must be in the top right hand corner. And still thinking about twos, in the third line from the bottom, we must have a two in where the 10 is. Therefore, we must also have an eight. So we've also got to now have in the middle block there, we must have a two here or here. Any more twos that we can put in? In the middle block in the top, we must have a two here or here. Now if we look at the bottom left hand corner, we know we've got to have a total of 15 and we've already got a 4 in there, so we've got 11 and we know we can't have 1, 2, 3 or 4, so that must be 5 and 6 adding up to give us the 11. Therefore we know that the 20 must be 4, 7 and 9, so the 4's got to be there or there, there's already a four in the middle column, isn't there? So we've got to have a seven and a nine in there. And that then leaves six and eight. And those together with two do make 16, so that's looking good. And the eight will have to be here and the six there. So then we know that there's going to be an eight on the right hand side or the block right in the middle. So three place, possible places for that. Looking at the top three boxes, we can see where the four has got to, uh, to go. It's got to be part of the 14, and it must be in that position, mustn't it? Because we already have one on the left-hand side. 
and therefore we need an 8 to make up the, the 14. Um, we can see that there must therefore be an 8 either here or here. And we should be able to put another 4 in, shouldn't we? Yes, on the bottom right hand side there must be a 4 down here. Have we got all our fours? I don't think so. We're getting closer, but not quite. But we can use the four that's with the 12, actually, can't we? Because we know that the other two numbers to add up to 12 must be eight. Can't be one and two, so it must be three and five. So that gives us three and five in there. And that now means we can complete the 10 because it can't have a two, three and four in it. So it must be one, nine, one, can't be in the second row so that must be nine and then one underneath so now we know that 13 must be six and seven and then we also know that we've got to have a one here um, oh i just realized in the bottom left hand corner we know where the one is don't we now so let's put those the one and the three in the right places so the one has got to be in the middle and the three there and looking at the middle box on the top we know there's got to be a 1 which cannot be in the 24 because that's not big enough is it so we've got to have um, a 1 for 7 therefore that's got to be 6 so we know our other 6 goes in there and of course the 24 well, 24 minus 8 is 16 and 16 has got to be 7 and 9 hasn't it so that's another one of our um, ones that only has one option because it can't be eight and eight so we know we've got seven and nine in there and so now we know that the eight in the top left hand corner must be three and five can't be three on the left hand side so it must be like that and then just below there for the 19 we must have a seven that's the only number not in that uh, that row and so we've got to have a nine either there or there. So what numbers have we got missing for the next box along? So 16 has got to be 6 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. But I don't think we know where those numbers are actually going to be, do we? So just let's write in 3 and 5, 3 and 5, and 3 and 5. So it's coming together. So looking back at uh, making up 19 in the top left hand corner, we've got a 7 and either an 8 or a 9. Well, if it was 9, that would make 16 plus 3. And we've got a 3 already in that column, so it's got to be 8, hasn't it? So we've got an 8 there and a 9 on the other side. And we know that 7 and 8 is 15, so we must have a 4 there. So that 2 must go below the four there. And now we know, looking at the bottom left hand corner, that the four and seven can't be there. So that's got to be a nine. So that must be seven, and then a four on the right hand side. So looking at the sevens on the left hand side, the third column along, we must have a seven in one of those two places. Can't be nine plus seven, because that would be too big for 15 wouldn't it in the bottom left hand box we've got a 15 5 and 6 we can now see which way around the 6 has got to be it's got to be on the left hand side and then we must have the other 6 over there that's the first number in the 22 and in the middle box we can see that the 4 must be right in the middle wasn't it Right, so let's have a look at the uh, the 15 top left hand corner. It's got a 9 there already, so we need 6 more. And um, we've already got a 2 and a 4 in that box, so it's got to be 1 and 5. And the 5 will be on the left hand side. And then we can go back up to the 7 and put the 1 and 2 the right way around. So the 1 is there, and the 2 there. So now we can go down to the 10 and put the 2 and the 8 the right way around. So there's the 2 and the 8. So now we can see there's only one number missing from that third column along, isn't there? There must be a 3 there. We've already got a 3 with a 4 just to the right, so we must have a 3 up there. So the 7 goes there. 
So now we can work out what the other number must be because 22 is 6 plus 7 plus 9. So 13 is 2 plus 3 plus 8. So the left hand side is sorted. And now we can get rid of one of those 8s in the middle. And looking at the sixth row down, we can see that uh, the only number we haven't got there at all is the number 5. And that can't be part of the 19, can it? Because 5 and 4 is 9, and then we need 10, too big. So we know where the 5 must go, and so where the 8 must go. So the 5 must be in the middle, the 8 must be for the 19, and of course the other 8 must be up here for that 15. And so we must have a 7 to join it, 7 and 8 is 15. And now 19 is 8 plus 4 plus 7. So having put that 5 into the 6th column, we now know that it can't be a 5 there. And the 1 on the right-hand side must be in the middle of that square. And in the top row, we now know where the 7's got to be. It's got to be on the right-hand side, about 24. So the 9 must be there and we can see where the one's got to be in the middle so the one and the three go like that so we can rule out the three in the left hand column there right looking at the twos going across in the uh, fifth and sixth rows it must be a two looking at the the middle box there is no two in the middle is there so there must be a two in the top left hand corner of that box so the one above can't have a two in it so there must be a five there so we can now see that the next one as long as a three and the next one a two so in the fourth column we've just got to put in a nine and a seven so the nine's got to go in here because it's already a seven in the middle and so the seven must go in there and so 26 is 2 plus 9 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 so that finishes that middle box so the middle column has got a 5 missing hasn't it? so that's got to be 5 and then we will need to finish off the 24 a 9 and a 3 and the 3 must be there and so the 9 goes there and then we've got what missing from that row a six a six goes in there so the next row will be, need a nine and an eight eight must be there so the nine goes there and we are getting there aren't we not much more to do right now we can sort out in the top corner six and seven we can see which way around they must go so six must come first and then the seven and then we can sort out the sevens on the right hand side can't we we must have a seven that goes in there and then we will need a five to make that add up to 13 so now the bottom right hand corner we can put the three and the five in so the five's in the middle three on the right hand side and then we can sort out the three and the five at the top and then all we need to do is to put the numbers in for the 18 and they must be three nine and six so that's done. Something that didn't crop up here but is often useful is 17. And that's obviously can only be eight and nine. And we didn't write down that three can only be one and two.